Hey guys, welcome back to Dave Small Engines. This is my Husqvarna 272 XP Pro Level 72cc chainsaw that I just picked up. Um, got it for a pretty sweet deal. It was blown up. So, the intent of this video is I will show a complete teardown disassembly um, and attempt to fix the blown cylinder without exactly having to replace it. Um, it's not always attainable depending on the amount of damage to the piston, um, but we'll see how it goes even if it's just for a temporary fix. So um, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll go from there. All right, so what does it mean when I say a blown up chainsaw? Well, this is a Husqvarna 272 XP, which means it is a 72 CC um, pro level chainsaw. So um, when I think of a blown up saw, I think of a saw that has either been abused and over revved or a saw that has um, had been run with an improper fuel to oil mixture. In this case, I believe it was the second, um, not enough oil or no oil at all in the mixture. Um, so I'm going to pull the cover off here, uh, take the muffler off, uh, take the cylinder head off and then see how much damage um, has been done. So the first step here is to take the cover off. Lost my tripod there. Okay, so the air box here, the cylinder here, and the muffler. Now, now that I have this cover off, um, to really see how bad the damage is, I'm going to pull the muffler off and then have a peek into the cylinder. It has to come off anyway, so it's not like I'm wasting any time. So on this saw, and most Husqvarna's, it is a four millimeter Allen head. So I'll throw that in my impact here and then see if we can get that undone. These are loose already. Not a good sign, maybe someone's already been in here. And this, this is actually just the cover to prevent the uh, muffler bolts from backing out. So there's those three screws there. Actually, I'm gonna get a towel laid down here for all the parts. And then it looks like there's another one there. So I've got to take the bar off now. Bar wrench in here. Pretty good. You can use an impact to back these off, I think, but they don't take too long by hand, so I'll just do it this way. Now the side cover should come off. There it is. With the slider instead of the dogs there. And the bar, the chain has to come off in this soft first, unlike the steels, because it goes over the clutch assembly. The bar and chain are in pretty good shape here, so even if I can't get the saw going, it should still be worth the hang on to this. So I'll sort it out later. Okay, and then that bolt that I was talking about that's holding on this guard is actually right here, and it's an Allen as well. Oh, it's full of goop. So I'll get a little screwdriver, a little pick that I have here. Pick that out before I strip it completely. Yeah, lots of oil in there. Bar oil though. Okay, so once that is out, it's a big long one as you can see there. Then this guard should come off, like so. Okay, so the next step here is to pull the muffler off. Um, it's actually a five millimeter Allen head bolt um, for the muffler. 
only two bolts. Right there. Be careful with the, not losing the gasket on the back side here. Someone's made one out of rubber before, apparently. Another bolt. My part's been. And then let's see if we can have a look in here. Oh yeah, that piston does not look good. So I'll turn it over in here and see if you can see the score marks. You see those? So this saw has been used and abused or run without oil. So question I start to think about here is, can I save this cylinder and piston by sanding down the piston, installing a new piston ring and sanding down the cylinder? Because it's always best to stay with an OEM cylinder and piston. They're more resilient. They are of higher quality. Or do I replace it with a aftermarket kit, cylinder and piston? And even then there's different grades of uh, quality. Um, something like a Meteor kit, but they could be, you know, two, $250 for a saw like this or like a cheap eBay kit for 50 bucks. That might work just for me. Um, but if I ever were to sell this saw, I wouldn't want to sell it with uh, the cheap crap in it. Um, just a personal choice I've made. All right, so I'm not sure if I can take the cylinder off without um, doing anything on the intake and carburetor side. First thing I'm gonna do now is take the uh, bar, I'm sorry, the handle off just to make it easier in the event that I can do that. Oh, this handle's been repaired before too. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there's some weld there. Again, these are full of junk. So I think this saw might have had a bit of a rough life. Not to say that some of the best saws aren't the most rough looking. I'm quite excited as this is, as I said, a 72cc saw, which is now the same as my Big Bore 441, which I believe is a 72 cc as well. It used to be a 70 cc as the 441, or the 044 or the 440. Okay, so now that the handle is off, take the spark plug out, see what size these are. I'm gonna guess again, these are five millimeter. just tucked in there. So I can't remember if this is screwed on. No, that's just a boot. So um, the way things are now, once I get this pesky little bolt out, should come out easy. Tip it upside down. Use my friend gravity. There we go. So these are the cylinder head bolts here. All right, so I'm gonna pop these four clasps off. For that, I'll use a flathead. Check out this air filter. Wow, looks like it's almost brand new. That's a good sign. Someone cared for it a little bit at least. All right, so then there's these four screws right here, holding on the air box mount. one there. I like to keep all the parts together and actually the nice part about recording stuff on video is that 
Um, if I have any questions for myself as to where something went, I can just go back and watch the video. So now it looks like the Allens are back at it again, holding the carburetor to this boot. Looks like a four mil. Okay, this came from over here. So one there and then one here. All right, so in order to get this twisted upwards so that I can back these two Allen bolts out here, I have to undo this retention bolt. As you can see, someone has been in here because the choke lever has been replaced with this little metal contraption here. So I'll be looking to order a new choke lever as well. Pop the fuel line off. Pop the throttle off. Nice and gentle. Don't want to lose this integral part of the operation. Now I should be able to tilt this up enough to get at these two Allen bolts to back this out. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put this back after that to make sure I don't lose it. All right, so these are a four mil Allen again. Oh, that's kind of concerning. That was a bit loose. Hmm. So let's think about that. If this was loose and it's not perfectly tight up against the cylinder, it could potentially introduce a lean condition, which might explain. Yeah, that's loose. Why the saw burnt up. Interesting, something to think about. Okay, so now that those two are off, I wanna minimize how much I'm doing on the carburetor side. Obviously, I've gotta clean this. Um, I'll get the air compressor nozzle hooked up, spray it all down. Um, but I just wanna quickly look at the damage first so I can get some parts on order, so I can, um, eventually rebuild this for you guys. Ta-da! So, cylinder's off. Let's see if I can get some lighting in here. Doesn't look too bad. That's great to know. Okay, so this is the exhaust side. This is oftentimes where the scoring is, but that cylinder really doesn't look all that bad. I like to feel, put my finger in there and feel around and see if there's any notches. It's a little rough, but there, Let's see if I can show you that. But I think I can save this, which is great to know because if I can save this cylinder and throw like a meteor piston in here, um, it'll be a lot cheaper for me. A little rough here, but not nothing some sandpaper um, can't take care of. Yeah, there, Let's see if I can show you that. But that's the only damage, really. This is just the protected skirting here. Yeah, not all that bad. Barely can feel it with your finger. Definitely can't feel it with my finger nail, but definitely can feel a little bit there with the finger. Let's check out the piston now. Ooh, maybe not as lucky. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, in my opinion, this piston is a goner. So no damage on the intake side at all. Ring still moves a little bit on that side, but this side is concerning. Now, for giggles, I might try and save this. Get some sandpaper out, take it off, get some sandpaper out, see if I can get the ring free without breaking. But as you can see, it looks pretty pinched and damaged there. So, I don't know if that's even worth trying to fix, trying to save. It's pretty crushed down there on the skirt. So I'm thinking the smart bet is just to buy a meteor piston and ring, clean up that cylinder that I have over there and slap it back together, clean it all up, slap it back together and then get her running. Okay, so I've got the piston off now. 
that was pretty simple. Um, all you do is this wrist pin is connected in between the connecting rod and the piston, and then there's two uh, retaining clips on the side. But I wanted to show you guys this. This is the exhaust side. So I have seen far worse than this, believe it or not. There's a couple chunks of aluminum here, as you can see, probably originally existed right here, and then it was uh, melted down onto there. But the intake side is almost perfect. Yeah, you can still see a little bit there, but you can see the factory grooves. Um, so I want to try and save this piston before um, I order a brand new one. Now, you can see also that the gap here is minimal compared to over here. So like a little bit of sandpaper in here and sandpaper in here. And I'll start going at it with a thicker grit and then I'll back it down to um, something smoother for the finishing touches. But I just figure it's worth a try to try and get this to clean up before spending $100 on a piston. And then I know I have the original piston. Oh, I'll show you the ring too. Ring isn't terrible. You can see the scuff marks there. So obviously I'll have to smooth that out. But I mean, if I can get 150 PSI out of this thing without having to put a new piston and cylinder in it, um, I'm laughing. I know it's worth, it doesn't cost me anything but time to try this piston. Um, the cylinder I can definitely clean up. So I might as well give it a try and see what, uh, what I can come up with. I know in the back of my head that the Meteor piston is the better call, um, but why not? So this is 300 grit sandpaper. It's pretty coarse if we're talking about sanding down aluminum. It's leaving some relatively good sized grooves or scratches, but that's okay because I plan on using like a 1,000 and then a 2,000 to clean it up at the very end. So already those grooves are becoming smaller. Now I'm not losing too much material which is what you want to see. All right, so I'm getting there with the thicker sandpaper. Um, I've gotten a lot of the little grooves out. Now you don't want to take too much material out, but these grooves really aren't all that thick or deep, I should say. So I'll keep going at it. I like to go on a cross hatch pattern. I actually learned that from Donnie Boy 73's mentor that when he cleans up pistons and cylinders, he does a cross hatching to help it retain the oil. And you can use tools like a, a power tool on this. However, you don't get the feel and then it's subject to a lot more damage potentially than what you're looking to rectify. So already, as you can see, they're already starting to clean up, which is great. Might just be able to save this one, ladies and gents. A couple of deeper grooves in there. A couple of deeper grooves. I don't love that. But I'm going to continue sanding away and see if I can't bring this back to life. All right, so we're really getting there. Sorry about the bad lighting there. But as you can see, there's only a really a few smaller grooves left. So I'm gonna keep going. I've only got a few little marks left here. Hoping that uh, a little bit more elbow grease and it'll be nice and smooth. Okay, so now that I'm done with the heavier grit stuff, it's done a pretty good job of cleaning this up. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, you can see a couple little marks there. I'm going to use now 600 grit and do the final touches on this, as well as take this and sand just the edge that was um, scored. I know it's not ideal, but really what I'm trying to do here is buy some time before the new piston and, um, and ring comes in. 
Um, and if I can get it to run, then, you know, I can use my chainsaw. All right, now, so I'm interested in getting rid of the grooves that I left in there with the thicker sandpaper. So I'm gonna use that cross hatch pattern again. And just make it nice and smooth. The smoother, the better. But you still want the oil to be picked up in the skirt and help lubricate the cylinder. All right, so this is really cleaning it up, as you can see. Um, these tiny little marks here, I can't even feel them with my fingernail. So to me, if I can just get this a little smoother, yeah, I can feel that one there. So a little bit more material off that one, I think I should be good to go. All right, I can't feel any of that with my finger. I'm very satisfied with that. Intake side, now I just have to hit with the 600. And then I'll try to sand the corners of the ring. All right, so this is what I am absolutely satisfied with. This is the intake side. Smooth, no notches, no grooves. This is the exhaust side, which used to be heavily scored on this side. This is a good camera, so it's picking up these little grooves here, but you cannot feel them with your finger. It's completely smooth. Didn't want to take too much material off. But now I'll sand the ring. And just what I'm looking for, those scored parts from where it was, there it is right there. So just sand this, take any roughness down. And you have to be careful with this because you don't want to take too much off. Because this is what makes the seal against the side of the cylinder. So just clean it up, see if there's any grooves, any notches. And there's one right there. See if you can see that. See that little right in the side there? So I'll see if I can take that off. And again, you don't want to go too hard on this, just so you can't feel it with your finger. So I can still kind of feel it there. My guess is that after a nice hot running session with good oiling, Whatever is stuck to here will sort itself out. And we'll get that nice compression back that we want. Yeah. Okay. Good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna sand the cylinder here. And as you saw, that's the side that's concerning, the exhaust side. So I'm gonna start with something thicker, um, higher, or sorry, grittier, and then move to the 600 for the final. Again, using that cross hatch pattern to help it mate. Oh yeah, that's coming out nicely. That is coming out nicely. Now this is something interesting here. This mark, that is directly correspondent to where a piece of this piston lost some aluminum. So I believe I have some aluminum stuck on the inside of that cylinder wall. And I have heard a trick that you can use muriatic, muriatic acid, but um, I'm just gonna try and sand it out now because I believe this other coating um, is still pretty much intact. All right, so I've been sanding this for the better part of 20 minutes now. I still can't get this chunk of aluminum off there and there's actually still some of the top. So I am going to try the muriatic acid trick. Um, my understanding is you use one of these Q-tips and you just put it on and it essentially just melts off the aluminum. Very strong fumes. Got the fan going there as you can hear maybe in the background. The theory is it should bubble off. It's kind of bubbling there, I guess. You can see it's coming off on the Q-tip. Wow. Okay, I think I might be a believer. I was unsure about that method before, but That's a heck of a lot better than it was. 
Wow, that's pretty impressive. Let's see if I can do the same thing at the top. Pretty cool. All right, so that muriatic, muriatic acid trick seems to work pretty good. Um, down into the cylinder. So there's no, uh, yeah, there's some markings, but there's nothing in there that you can touch with your finger and feel. And there certainly isn't any aluminum that is stuck to the cylinder wall, which would be my concern when I put the piston ring and piston back inside. So I think other than cleaning it up here a little bit more, it's ready to go back on. All right, so as you can see, I've had a chance to go over it with the air compressor. Um, it's pretty clean, uh, clean enough that I'm confident that uh, there isn't any debris that's going to be falling into the, uh, uh, the engine cases. And um, I think I'm ready to start putting it back together. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the, everything is clean as I do this, that the gasket goes into place as it did prior. And now, I've got this all cleaned up here. Give it a good, a good going to give it a good um, lubrication around the um, ring land so that I know that everything is smooth and free. All right, so I'm gonna pop the ring on now, keeping in mind where the notch is and how it fits in. Be very careful with these. Things can go wrong quickly with piston rings and then you're up the creek or at least needing to buy a new one which is on order anyhow but for this experiment very careful just like that so when it compresses it lines up now you want to make sure it's free other than hmm okay so the ring moves around freely doesn't stay in one spot. It compresses like this when it goes back into the cylinder. Now the arrow always points to the exhaust side. See that arrow? Out the front to the exhaust. Should go through. There it goes. So now it's in. And then just have to spin it around. Leaking some bar oil here. Spin it around and then put the final retaining clip in. Like so now, if I always get a, a screwdriver here and just double check that it's in the groove. The last thing you want is for one of these to pop out when it's spinning 12,000 RPM. All right, as you can see, I've cleaned this cylinder up with the air compressor, turned out pretty well. Intake side, exhaust side, so I know it goes on like this. So what I wanna do here is, using my fingers, is compress, we gotta help this piston ring closed as it goes into the cylinder. And this isn't even one of the peskier double ring setups. This one should be easier. There it goes, just like that. So now just slide it down slowly. Say some nice things. Welcome to your new home. Make sure the gasket is lined up. It's almost ready to bolt down. There we are. All right, so we're on our way. Now, when I put cylinder head bolts back in, I always, always, always start them by hand. What you don't wanna do is cross thread one of these down at the bottom. Um, first of all, it'll be a heck of a chore getting it out. Second of all, you might damage, well, you will damage the threads in the engine case. And then you have to either throw it in the garbage or um, tap and move to a larger size bolt Either way, this is a safe and easy method by doing it by hand because you'll know if you've cross-threaded it because it won't go anywhere by hand. 
with a with a high torque impact or a, any impact at all, even a drill, um, there's enough power there to strip those threads. Also, I like to make sure the threads, it's hard to see here, are clean on these bolts. Easy tip, stick your finger nail in the screw or the threads and just back it out. It'll take all the dirt out right into your rag. See that? Nice and clean and then I'm left with this mess here. There we are. Last one. All right, I'm gonna do these by hand. It's the proper method. You don't want to strip these. I can't stress that enough. And when I tighten these, we're gonna go with a cross thread or cross pattern. Just like on a car, you would do a star pattern for a five bolt. And essentially what that's doing is applying the torque evenly making sure that the cylinder head is coming down perfectly level on the base or the cases, whatever you want to call it. Nice and tight. I don't know the exact torques, but for these, I suppose that would help to know. But I've done enough of these that I can tell by feel, and I believe you can find that torque probably in inch pounds online. That torque spec. All right, so now a little squirt down the cylinder hole with some WD just because I want to make sure the cylinder is lubricated. Now it's time to pull it over and see. There we are. No binding, no noises, nothing weird. As everything starts to reset in because essentially we've taken the edge off the piston ring or the, the grooves out of the piston ring and the grooves out of the side of the cylinder and the piston. So we wanna make sure everything just mates up nice and easy back together. Now, just because I'm curious, I want to do a compression test. So the ring hasn't had a chance to reseat in um, that comes with heat. However, I want to see what kind of numbers I get with the compression just after doing the two hour sanding job that I did. So it's at zero right now. Would you look at that? 120, 125, 30. So 135 PSI just based off sanding the cylinder, sanding the piston, resetting the ring with some sandpaper. I'm assuming that this will run at this amount of PSI. Um, usually anything over 90 will at least run a little bit. But I'm assuming also that the uh, cylinder and piston ring and piston will mate together again and create an even, even higher compression rating. So let's get it back together. Okay, I've got the carburetor assembly back on. Plug the fuel line in now. All the gaskets have been put back where they were. If you recall, there was this little throttle linkage here that worked in something like this. So we want to see. Looks like we're over grommet. Down here. I gotta be careful with these rubber grommets because the saw is probably 20 something years old at least. Choke again is on this kind of makeshift lever. I'll be buying one of those, but everything's at least back together there. All right, got the mounts on.
Again, you don't want to go too tight with these. Plastic strips easily, but it also does not have a tendency to back out on you, so you don't need to go super tight. Okay, so the next step on the list is the muffler. As you can see here, as I said earlier, it's, uh, someone has tried to make a gasket for this. Obviously, they've misplaced that gasket. I'm going to pull this off for now, order a new gasket. But for the purpose of this video and the purpose to see if I can get it running, I'm just going to run it without a gasket, which isn't that big of a deal. So pre-start one like this, just to make sure again that I'm not stripping out that cylinder head. Uh, that is very expensive to replace. So we take our time, make sure they're threaded in by hand before using the impact. Which again, not necessarily the best option, but once you get a feel for your tool, you'll know how tight you can go without stripping. So the muffler's on. Next up here, ooh, that's kind of gross, isn't it there? Just want to get it running. All right, so we'll get the handle on. All right. So, I don't think I'm going to throw the guard on for the uh, muffler bolt yet because I don't know if it runs. In fact, I can probably start it just like this. Um, clutches here, I don't see any issue there. Yeah, so why don't I try and start it and see what happens. All right, so I just put all brand new gas in. Um, there's no chain, no bar. Um, I'm going to lock the choke on, I'm going to lock the throttle on. And I'm going to pull it and see if it starts. Now, keep in mind there's WD-40 in here still, so I want to make sure that um, I give it a good fair chance. But uh, here we go. There we are. That's pretty promising. So it'll start and it'll run. It's great news. I'm gonna pack it away for the night. Uh, don't wanna upset the neighbors, but um, I'll be sure to show you the rest of the video tomorrow once I uh, get it all completed. All right guys, so um, I've got the bar back on. Um, the, uh, the guard here on as well, as well as the brake and it's cold, haven't started it yet. Um, let's see if we can get it started. Lock the throttle, choke on. Whoa, that's a positive sign. Choke off. down here and then pull the spark plug out just to do a quick compression test to see if that numbers come up at all uh, but then I'll throw it back together take it outside see if I can cut some stuff okay so I'll let it cool down here a bit got the compression tester in lock the throttle give it a few pulls <laughs> PSI. Not too bad. I'll show that to the camera. 140. So after doing some more cutting, I'm assuming that number will only go up. But uh, if not, that's still uh, that's still pretty adequate.
right, so that went way better than I expected. Um, I still have the Meteor piston and cylinder uh, kit on order, which I intend to put back in this saw. Um, but I just wanted to show you that with, you know, two to three hours of sanding and repair, that will get you out of a pinch. This is a perfectly usable chainsaw with good compression. And, um, you know, say you're stuck out at a camp and you're, and you're cutting away, all you need is a little bit of sandpaper and some time. A few tools, um, really not all that complex. Yes, it may take a bit of time, but uh, totally worth it in my opinion. Will it last as long maybe as a replacement high-end kit? Probably not, or an OEM kit? Probably not. But in a pinch, this will get you by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, I'll keep putting out more content. Thanks a lot. Take care.